Because what we think begets what we do. Because despite what we may think, when left to our own devices, we don't really think nearly as much as we should. Because common sense is less a way of thinking and more a way of circumventing thought. Because bypassing thought doesn't entail inaction, but rather lots of unthinking action. Because oppression has existed and continues to exist precisely because it is common sense to those who are complicit with its structures, and therefore it is invisible. Because there is more than one common sense because it takes work to uncover our own assumptions. Because even after we uncover those assumptions, it takes more work to challenge them. Because challenging our assumptions may not be about finding new answers, but it most certainly is about asking new questions. Because it's better to be left with a question mark than an exclamation point if that exclamation point is ending a sentence that serves not to reason, but to rationalize. Not to think, but to evade thinking. Because most of us don't think nearly enough. Because most of us don't listen nearly enough. Because most of us don't ask ourselves for the same evidence that we demand of the people who disagree with us. Because we will disagree. Because we need a way to deal with moments of disagreement that doesn't end in rhetorical, emotional, social, or physical violence because we need a way to examine ourselves. Because there are things we do or think that need to change. Because changing ourselves means confronting ourselves with what we already know, taking what is unquestioned and familiar and making it strange enough for long enough to realize what questions we aren't asking. Because this endeavor takes more than introspection, it takes dialogue. Because common sense isn't up for discussion. Because common sense doesn't ask questions. Because we need not only to ask better questions, but also to reason more effectively. Because all too often we misrepresent other people's arguments to make them easier to attack. Because all too often we avoid engaging with actual issues by making up extreme hypothetical consequences. Because all too often our own arguments are circular, tautological. Because all too often we attack people's character or origins rather than dealing with what they're actually saying. Because what we think and how we think begets what we do or fail to do. That's life and life is worth examining. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're looking for an introduction to philosophy and how it deals with these issues of thinking and reasoning, what sorts of questions it's made a place for, I've put some links in the doobly-doo, so check those out. Also, if you'd like to keep examining life and literature and culture and society with me, please subscribe.